you do it? Oh. Quiz four. I got another take home quiz for you guys today as well, by the way. Uh, we'll go with good old Ann. This quiz, it turned out, only used that equation, VF equals VI plus AT. But remember, that's actually four different equations because it's got four variables. It's also T equals something. It's also VI equals something. And it's also A equals something. And I hope by now I've nudged you away from that triangle to say, look, there's a much more powerful tool. It's called algebra, and it'll handle any bizarre equation out there. And I think you're probably taking physics 12. You're going to see we're going to be doing like eight and nine variable equations in our head is our goal. First of all, what is acceleration? Well, I'm going to accept a lot of definitions for this, but here's what I say acceleration is. I say it is a If I wanted to give you an English definition, what else did you say? Holler it out and I'll probably give you the mark. Did someone, what else did you say? Oh, is it a vector? Yes or no? Yes. So one mark for the yes. That is non-negotiable if you said no. Sorry. What else could you say acceleration was? Anybody say anything else? You all said change in velocity? It's really a change in velocity over change in time. But if you're changing velocity, you're accelerating, which has huge implications in the next unit, too. OK. An accelerating must at all times, A, have a positive velocity, B, have an increasing speed, C, have a changing direction, D, have a changing velocity. What do you think, A, B, C, or D? Yep. Can you give me an, a way that A could be wrong? Give me an example where something could be accelerating and have a negative velocity. Yeah. Going backwards, going backwards sure. Speeding up, going backwards. Speeding up, going. It, speeding up forward, still going backwards. Sure. Can you give me a way where an accelerating could have a decrease, uh, an accelerating object could have a decreasing speed so that B could be wrong? Slowing down. That's an acceleration. Uh, could you give me a way where an accelerating object could not have a change in direction? Going in a straight line. So yeah, D. Number three, I may take more than one answer, but you'll have to convince me. Okay? Every year, there's a couple of obscure ones later on where a kid says, well, I thought of it this way and this way, and I, yeah, okay, I'll accept it. Anyways, let's see. Uh, state whether your velocity is increasing or decreasing in each of the following situations. My abbreviation for increasing is an arrow pointing up. My abbreviation for decreasing is an arrow pointing down. That's my high-tech system. So if your velocity is positive and your acceleration is positive, is your velocity increasing or decreasing? Yep. If your velocity is positive and your acceleration is negative, is your velocity increasing or decreasing? Decreasing, you're slowing down. If your velocity is negative and the acceleration is positive. Now, usually what I think when I see the word negative backwards, acceleration is positive, forwards. So if I'm backing up, but I'm accelerating forwards, what's happening there? Slowing down, so increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. I heard the creasing. I read. Decreasing. There is a way you can convince me that that's increasing. If you said increasing, I will give you a second to convince me, and I'll give you full marks. Did anybody say increasing? Because by the, yeah, convince me. Oh, you don't think you were right? Okay. I'm going to mark you wrong then, even though you're right. Technically, you're wrong. The, the, the reason has to do with how negative and positive numbers work. If you're a negative number, like negative 10, and you move to negative 9 and negative 8, are you getting bigger or smaller? So here's negative 10, and you go to negative 9. Is negative 9 bigger or smaller than negative 10? Technically, it's bigger because it's closer to positive, even though 9 is a smaller number than 10. See, Cade, if you had said, well, Mr. Duick, you have a negative velocity, and as a negative velocity <coughs> moves closer to positive, that's the definition of increasing in number. I would have accepted that, but you didn't, so <coughs> uh, Velocity is negative backwards, and acceleration is negative. I'm accelerating backwards while traveling backwards. What's going to happen to my velocity? 
increase or decrease? Increase. I'll take increasing, although if you had, did you say decreasing? Okay, because if you had said, well, you're getting more negative and technically more negative is smaller, that's decreasing, I would accept that as well. But we'll do that. Uh, hey, one mark for each of those, a little score out of four. Oh, hey, Duick went on a rant on this several times before the break. I think, in fact, I think I even might have dropped dead and laid down on the floor one time to get your attention. I suspect I would have done it. What is the slope of a velocity versus time? I forget, Mr. Duick. I forget. It's acceleration. How can I figure that out? Since slope is rise over run, velocity is meters per second. There's the rise over run is time, it's seconds, it's meters per second per second, which is meters per second squared. You know what? It is acceleration. Those were conceptual. Now we get into some number crunching. A car's velocity increases from 5 to 25 in 5 seconds. What's, you know what? Defic. I'm going to list my data. A equals, don't know. What's that 5? Oh, sorry, what's the first 5? VI. What's the 25? And what's the second five? Time. So I'm looking for an equation that has, well, the equation is uh, VI, sorry, VI, Mr. Duick. Apparently I'm in New Year's still. VF equals VI plus AT. If you wrote that, you, first of all, if you get the, the right answer, you'll get two out of two. But if you just went this far, I'd give you a half mark because you've identified the correct equation out of two. What are they asking me to find, Jordan? Okay, how would I get the A by itself in this equation? Then? In your head? Isn't that, if you get that, if you wrap your brain around it, I'm telling you it's a great shortcut. I'm going to push you guys that way. A is, he said, look, you got the VF, you're going to subtract the VI over, and you're going to divide by T. In fact, if I saw that, I would give you one out of two. Half mark for the VF equals VI plus AT. Half mark for the A equals VI. Sorry, VF minus VI over T. Then I would give you a half mark for plugging and chugging. And you can tell Mr. Kamosi made this quiz up. Do you know how you can tell Mr. Kamosi made this quiz up? Because the answers work out evenly. I don't care enough to work them out ahead of time and give you guys nice numbers. Mr. Kamosi is better at math than I am. So 25 take away 5 is 20 divided by 5. And if you said 4 meters per second squared, you get 2 out of 2. The way I mark, Jordan, I glance at the answer. If you got it right, you get full marks. If you got it wrong, I go back and look for part marks. I would give you half mark, half mark, half mark, half mark. Now, if you forgot units, I will always take a half mark off. So if you just wrote 4 or you have the wrong units, I will take a half mark off. What that means is in this course, whenever you hand a test in, before you hand the test in, you know what you should check for at the very, very end? Yeah. Units on the written section. Make sure you got them all in there. It's a good habit to get into. Um, you don't have to have the 4.0, but why did I go 4.0 and not just 4? Yeah. Well, it's two sig figs and three sig figs. So I, two sig figs, right? I told you I'll emphasize sig figs. I won't take marks. I took marks off for the first test. I've left it behind. Uh, hey, give yourself a score of two. Turn the page. Uh, once again, it wants us to find average acceleration. OK. By the way, looking at this question, am I speeding up or slowing down? Uh, yeah, hang on, let me I'll ask the same question slightly differently. Cam, am I expecting a negative or a positive acceleration with this question? I am? Am I speeding up or slowing down? So I'm expecting a negative or a positive acceleration. So there, I got a built-in error check. If I get a positive, I've got something in the wrong place or I've hit something wrong on my calculator. Uh, I would give you a half mark if you wrote VF equals VI. Well, OK, let's defic. I'll teach you the full method since we turned the page. I would say A equals question mark. I would say VI is 30. What's VF? Zero. Time is six. So I'm going to go uh, A, uh, well, do the whole thing, Mr. Duke. Half mark if you have VF equals VI plus AT. 
half mark for A equals VF minus VI over T. Now, if max, you just did that, okay, I give you one whole mark for that because I, oh, you must have had the other equation to get to that. So I would give you both halves for that line right there. Uh, now it's plug and chug. It's going to be 0 minus 30 divided by 6. You get negative 5.0 meters per second squared. Yes? Slowing down. Two marks. What's number 7 asking me to find? Oh, if you, forgot, if you missed the negative, I'd take a half mark off. Hey, what's the uh, number seven asking me to find? Oh, okay. VF equals question mark. Uh, VI, I think, is three. A is five. What's T? Hey, this is good. I got VF equals VI plus AT. I got the VF by itself already. It's going to be 3 plus 5 times 3.5. Do that one in your head, Mr. Du sure. Uh, 5 times 3.5 is going to be 15 plus 2, 17.20.5? Yeah. yeah. OK, technically, how many sig figs should I go to in my answer? Technically, but I'm not going to be that fussy. But, you know. What's number eight asking me to find? <coughs> Time, scalar or vector? Scalar, so Cam, time is always going to be positive. If I get a negative time, and that's going to happen fairly often, you've messed up somewhere. You've made a mistake in a displacement or a velocity direction or something like that. Um, oh, and A equals 3.5. I'm looking for an equation that has those. Well, it's the same VF equals VI plus AT. Okay, how would I get the T by itself? Ready, Justin, my friend? See the T, see the T, see the T? What else is on the same side as the T? And? OK. So to get the T by itself, I'm going to move the VI over first. How? What's the VI doing? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Yep. So how will I move it over? Yep. There was already a VF, so I'll drop it. You said I was going to minus a VI over to that side. Yes? What's the A doing to the T? How will I move it over? Are you saying that T equals VF minus VI over A? You'd be right. VF, VI over A. It's going to be 8 divided by 3.5. I made up this question because I didn't care enough to make it work out evenly. Do that one in your head, Mr. Duick. I can't. It's got a yucky 7 in it. 8 divided by 3.5. You get 2.285, 2 2.3. 2.3. What? Seconds. What's number 9 asking me to find? VI. Uh, let's see, A is 3.2, T is 3.3, VF is 20. On this quiz, I'm using this equation every single time. By the way, I'm being sloppy. Technically, I should put vector symbols on all of those, but how would I get the VI by itself? minus the AT. VI is going to be VF minus AT. It's going to be 20 
minus a 3.2, 3.3. Do you get 9.44 meters per second? Can you give yourself a score at the top of the quiz out of 17, please? Okay. <laughs> Called this lesson seven, more free fall examples. Free fall. Jumping out of an airplane. I mentioned that I jumped out of an airplane. Um, dropping objects in the air. You're probably going to want your formula sheet handy if you don't have it handy already. These are questions that you're going to see on your test with different numbers. Stuff that we can handle right now. So lesson seven, some more free fall examples, because free fall is cool. Yep. Did I not give you guys a lesson? All right, let's try that again. Now that I've actually given you the lesson. That was kind of dumb. Free fall. I, I'm, how many of you have stood on a cliff and tossed rocks or other objects over the cliff? Okay. How many of you has the cliff actually been dead vertical? There aren't that many dead vertical cliffs. Most of them are hills that are really, really steep. So stuff you can do from skyscrapers safely, not foolishly. Although I will say I have done this in apartment buildings in the stairwells that go like this. There's always that little gap down the middle where you can drop like pennies or coins and, and you can tell no one's down there. So you can try the experiments yourself if you really, really want to. Anyways, object is dropped from a cliff, hits the ground five seconds later, neglecting air resistance. Or I said to you, we're going to pretend our objects are like little bowling balls, very aerodynamic and heavy. Fine. Okay. A says, find the height of the cliff. This is the stuff that, as far as I'm concerned, Kyle, now I can ask you to figure out. So the first question is, what's A asking me to find? Now, it says height, but there is no H on my formula sheet. What were we really talking about here? D. By the way, technically, it's a displacement, I think. In fact, are we ending up above or below from where we started? Am I expecting a negative or a positive answer when I find displacement? If I get a negative, I'll smile to myself. I'll give myself a little nerdy smile and say, I probably did this right. OK. What else, what else, what else do we know? Anytime they say dropped, I know something. Is? Yep. What else do I know? I know the final velocity? What? Zero. Not zero. That's after it hits the ground. The final velocity when we drop something is never going to be zero. Because when I say final, and I'm glad you did that, because my physics 12s do it too, and it drives me crazy. When I say final velocity for dropping an object, what I really mean is impact velocity. And I'm telling you, if the impact velocity was zero, you could all jump out of airplanes without parachutes. Right? So do I know the final velocity? Not yet. By the way, the other reason I know I don't know the final velocity is that's what they're asking me to find in part B. What else do I know? Oh, are we in free fall? I will never tell you the acceleration. We're in free fall near the Earth. What's the acceleration? Negative 9.8. So I'm looking for an equation that's got d, v, i, t, and a in it. And I guess no vf. I always write a half. I always type 0.5 on my calculator. Although some of you have fraction buttons and could do the 1 half. Anyways, I'll do that. Oh, why can I do? that in this particular example. VI yeah, is zero. It's kind of convenient. What am I trying to find, Jordan? Uh, oh, it's ready by itself. Well, this is great. Doesn't happen that often. I'll take it. Straight plug and chug. It's going to be 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 5 squared 
Do that one in your head, Mr. Okay, I think I can. Uh, so 4.9, 25, 4.9, uh, 122.5? Double check me. Negative, sorry, negative, negative 122.5? Am I right? Had you tried typing it into your cal- Oh, you're just looking over at his? Now, did they actually say find the displacement? What words did they use in part A, Spencer? Height. Height's technically a scalar. I will never take marks off for that, but you don't say the cliff is negative 122.5 meters high, even if you are standing on the top and looking down, all of you are trained and taught to think that, you know, it's a positive answer. So if you said 122.5, Daniel, I'll give you full marks for that. And by the way, really, how many sig figs should I go to? I really should say 120. Okay? Not gonna, but okay. B. B. What's B want me to find? BF. Did I list everything on the line above? Then, Kyle, I'm not going to read DFIC. If I had turned the page, I might relist everything, but since it's sitting right there. So I'm looking for an equation. It has to have VF in it. And then it would be nice if it had VI, T, and A, preferably not D, although it could. I just want to avoid using it if I have to. In fact, there's one that's just screaming out at me. We just finished writing a quiz about what? Yeah. Okay. By the way, if you are ever standing on a cliff or a high height and you toss a rock over, okay, time it either by counting or your smartphone. Square the time, times it by 10, because 9.8 is really close to 10, divide by 2, and that will give you the rough height of the cliff. I'm a nerd. I actually, kinda, I, I actually do that when I'm standing in line at amusement park rides. I try and calculate ride specs out because it makes the line go faster. And honestly, it makes the ride better. Oh, and then if you want to find V final, assuming you're starting from rest, if you want to figure out how fast your rock hit the ground at, what's the acceleration? Negative 9.8. If I'm doing the math in my head, I just use negative 10. Time is 5. So if you time something when you drop it, times that by 10, that's how fast it hit the ground. Roughly. Really? I'm only, the only one that figures out amusement park rides standing in line? Okay. I'll rub off on you. Uh, negative 9.8 times 5, 40, negative 49? Units, meters per second. By the way, you guys know the trick to timesing by five in your head with yucky numbers? You times by 10 and divide by two. So I went 98 divided by two, 49, and that gets rid of deaths. Because timesing by 10, hey, every one of you can handle, even, and uh, dividing by two, you know. Okay, tricks of the trade. C. Average velocity. Average velocity. Hmm. How do I find an average? Do I have the average on your formula sheet? Can't remember if I put it on there or not. Oh, it is? How do I find the average? Capique? Oh, it's just distance over time? Displacement over time? That, I guess, would work. Sure. My abbreviation for V average is VAVG, although I noticed on the formula sheet I put AVE for average, whatever. There is actually a fancy symbol for average. For those of you who are wondering, it's a horizontal line, but it's OK. Uh, what was the displacement? What was the time? Mm. 
negative 24.5. There's my average speed, average velocity. Okay. D. D. What's D asking me to find? What's D asking me to find? Huh? Time. Oh, okay. Isn't it five? I, you know what? I, it's not going to be five seconds. I bet you they're going to modify the question. So I may do some re deficking here. I don't know. What else did they tell me in part D? Uh, here's what I heard. To attain a velocity. I heard the to attain part. That was good. A what? Of what? A velocity on negative Which velocity is that? Initial or final? You think it's initial? Oh, no, Why? What's initial? The initial is zero. Dropped. Good. I'm, I'm glad you caught that. I think it's. A, oh, no! It's final, right? They're saying, okay, at this. Uh, what's the final velocity? Uh, negative 20. Negative 20? Initial is still zero. What else do I know? I know that. By the way, can I say this? Someone said yes, someone said no. One of you's right. I'll, I'll, I'll say it this way. Why can't I use this? I haven't hit the ground. I, I, you know what? At this speed, I probably haven't hit the ground yet. I'm still in the air. My displacement, in fact, I could probably calculate my displacement. If you told me V final was negative 20, I might even be able to tell you how far it fell by that time. In fact, I may have asked that as part E. I can't remember. If I didn't, I should have. Hey, I'm looking for an equation that has T, VF, VI, and A in it. Is that right? Yeah. Except, what do I want to find? T. Anybody want to try getting the T by itself? Cam, my friend, how would I get the T by itself? So again, we folk, oh, maybe you're good, sorry. How would I get the T by itself? More specific. So where is the T? Left side or right side? OK. What's in front of the T? How will I move that over? What's the A doing to the T? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? So how will I move it over? I'm going to do that last, though. What else is on this side? How will I move the VI? What's the VI doing to the T? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? So how will I move it over? So tell me what to write, my friend. The VF stays, and then what? Minus VI, good. And then divide by, that easy. It wasn't, but we're getting there. Cam, keep going. What's VF? Tell me what to plug in. Negative 20. What's VI? Oh, nice. What's A? By the way, time is my final answer going to be negative or positive, ideally. Time, scalar or vector. Look on the bottom, I have a negative. I was going, oh crap, if I divide by a negative, I get an, oh, but look, on the top, I also get a negative. Negative divided by negative is? I'm probably doing this right. The universe is telling me, hey, I think you're okay. <coughs> negative 20 minus zero, which is really just negative 20, divided by negative 9.8. 2.04? Seconds. Yep. Yep. 
Yep. Yep. If you noticed that it was zero, I would have no problem if you had said, hey, why don't I do that and just divide by A and I'm good to go. In fact, that's a better step. I was giving you the generic one. Yep. E. Uh, ooh. Can you put a little star next to E? I like this question. I like this question. Actually, I like all of these questions. I do. I like all of these questions. I like all of these questions. Why would I say that? Huh? Pardon me? You didn't hear me say that. You're just a good student. Tends to know what you um, But I, I have found E is one kids find tricky. Because it is. I'm asking how far it travels during the third <laughs> second. We looked at this before Christmas, but it was worth reviewing. What we're saying is, I guess during the third second, first second it maybe falls this far, second second it's gonna fall a bit further because it's going faster, third second it's gonna fall even further. How far? Well, the first second, don't write this down, starts at time zero, and don't write that down, goes to one. The second second starts at time one and goes to, so the third second starts at time two and goes to three. So the first thing I wanna realize, Riley, is somehow I'm gonna use a time of two seconds and a time of three seconds. First common mistake, kids say, oh, third second, I'll go three and four. No, two and three, because you're starting at zero. You okay with that, Amelia? Okay. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the distance for two seconds. I'm gonna find the distance or the displacement for three seconds. How far it falls in the first two seconds, let's say it starts here, it falls to there. How far it falls in the first three seconds, and how can I find this little chunk? Do you remember? Hmm. Kind of divide your page up into three little chunks there. For each of these, I do know right? For each of these, I do know Justin VI dropped VI is zero. Oh, in this first one, time is two seconds. In the second one, time is three seconds. Okay. I'm looking for an equation that has distance or displacement, a, t, and v, i in it. There is one. Now, I need to pause. If you're still at a stage where you cannot find the equation, you want to be coming in for help after school sometime in the next few days because we have to be at the point where we can at least find the correct equation. So having said that, hey, what's the correct equation here? Yep. Hey, Jordan, can I do this? Can I do this? Since you pointed out that last time, yeah, totally. In fact, if I want to find how far I fall in the first two seconds, it's going to be 0.5, negative 9.8 times 2 squared. In the first two seconds, I fall negative 19.6, almost negative 20, but negative 19.6 meters. Why negative when I fall? Am I below or above from where I started? Below, so I'm, I'm good with that. In the first 
three seconds, starting at the top, I fall 0.5, negative 9.8 times 3 squared. Which is 44.1 seconds. More, sorry, meters, not seconds, meters. So, Kyle, in the first two seconds, I fall from he start right here, 19.6, negative. In the second, sorry, in the first three seconds, I fall 44.1. How can I figure out this little chunk here? How far I, how far I fell in that third second? Subtract. Yes, subtract. So distance in the third second is going to be negative 44.1 minus negative 19.6. Trust the math will work even with negatives. The approach, yeah, if you want to find out the difference between two objects, you subtract them. What do you get? Negative, because I think you're still falling down. What do you get? No calculator? Hey, I got him to open his calculator up too. Excellent. What do you get, folks? Anyone? Negative 24 point five. In the third second of free fall, when I jumped out of an airplane, I mentioned I jumped out of an airplane, in that third second I fell 24.5 meters. What direction? Down. Negative. Uh, I got two, I got three, and I got four, and I got five, right? Okay. For now, you have a take-home quiz, but I also got a cool video or two I want to show you.